Welcome to part three of the Glacier Mass Balance Lectures. My name is Andrew Mercer and I will be giving a brief introduction to the basic processes of glacier mass balance. We have seen that the net surface mass balance is the accumulation, or winter balance, minus the ablation, or summer balance. Previously we looked at the accumulation, now we will consider ablation. The ablation pattern whilst similar to the accumulation pattern, tends to have a simpler relationship to elevation. The ablation gradient follows elevation with only slight deviations from a linear relationship at the front and in the accumulation area. Why should the model for ablation be so much simpler than that for accumulation? Inland terminating mid-latitude glaciers, surface melt of snow and ice is the primary component of ablation. Insulation and heat exchange with the air above are the main sources of energy for melt. Looking at a plot of ablation on Stor Glaciera and the monthly average temperatures at Tarfara Research Station one kilometre away, we can see that average air temperatures in July and August correlate well with ablation. But this doesn't really tell us why the spatial distribution of ablation should match elevation so well. To understand this, we need to look at the air mass itself and how that interacts with the glacier surface. As a parcel of air moves over the Kebnekaisa Massif from west to east, passing first over Robos Glacier, then Seed and Nultopem, and finally down Stor Glacier, the air is forced upward over the top, then sinks down again. Looking at an emigram, we can see that a parcel of unsaturated air moving from the front of Robos at 1100 meters with a starting temperature of 20 degrees centigrade, will cool to 11 degrees centigrade by the time it passes over Kebnekaisa's top at 2100 meters. It then warms again as it passes along the front of Stor Glaciaren. The surface of the glacier can be no warmer than zero degrees, and indeed is generally at this temperature over the entire glacier throughout the summer. The adiabatic lapse rate then increases the temperature difference between the glacier surface at zero degrees centigrade and the overlying air parcel as it passes to lower elevations. This increased temperature gradient transfers more heat from the air to the ice crystals, which then results in increased melt. Through this mechanism, we get a strong correlation between elevation and melt, but there are confounding factors. If the parcel of air rising up Robos had been saturated, and then at higher elevations this moisture precipitates out, then we would cool the air less on its passage up, according to the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. But it would warm according to the dry adiabatic lapse rate on its way down, resulting in even higher temperatures as the air parcel returns to lower elevations. This is the rain shadow effect. The vertical temperature gradient from the summer surface up through the air also affects heat transfer to the surface. The melting summer surface is by definition at zero degrees centigrade. The transition to a stable higher temperature is not a straight line. The data shown here are taken from Johannes Oleman's The Microclimate of Valley Glaciers and are based on work performed at the Pastazza Glacier in Austria on the 29th of July 2007. Mixing of air above the glacier surface greatly increases the transference of heat to the glacier. For this reason, turbulence complicates further the simple model of elevation controlled ablation. Ablation at the surface is also controlled by radiated energy. This image shows approximately the shadows over Stor Glacier at midday and the end of July. Here, we see both shadowing from topography and clouds as well as the differing conditions on the summer surface of the glacier. Albedo is a measure of the reflectivity of a surface. White surfaces reflect more light than dark surfaces. The condition of the snow, debris cover and water content influence just how much radiation is reflected without giving its energy to warming the surface. This list is taken from Patterson's Physics of Glaciers and shows how important surface conditions are for the, for the absorption of radiated heat. Dry winter snow reflects more than 80% of winter's sunlight, but as we move to summer and the snow gives way to ice in the ablation zone, almost 80% of the summer's sunlight is absorbed.
An important process in melting the snowpack is refreezing of, of meltwater. The specific heat capacity of ice is 2.114 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.217 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. The latent heat of fusion for ice to water is 334 kilojoules per kilogram. If a kilogram of ice crystals, or snow, is warmed to melting point, it will percolate into the underlying snowpack or ice. This water is then warmer than its surroundings and will transfer heat to them. If the water refreezes in the snowpack, it releases 334 kilojoules for every kilogram, which, given the specific heat capacity of ice, means that approximately 158 kilograms of ice can be warmed by 1 Kelvin. This process brings the subsurface snowpack closer to melting point before it has contacted the warm air above. We have seen that topography does influence ablation, but primarily through elevation. This connection is through air temperature and the adiabatic lapse rate. Air at higher elevations is colder than air at lower elevations. Topography also influences ablation through shadowing and its effect on albedo, but albedo is also influenced by other factors. Rainfall alters the surface of the snowpack, increasing the amount of incoming radiation absorbed and thus warming the snow. The direct contribution of heat from the rain to warming the snow is relatively small. Surface debris is the other main contributor to albedo alteration. Moraine, dust and rockfall will tend to be darker than the snow or ice and increase absorption of heat. We have also looked at the role of refreezing in warming the snowpack to melting point. Refreezing of surface layers in lower strata, which when it occurs in a stratum below the current year snowpack, is called internal accumulation and is a source of error for mass balance calculations.